I'm not sure how much um, I, I take them into account or address them um, when I'm seeing these patients. If we think of our case scenario, Luis, who has this atopic dermatitis and uh, clearly it itches, it's going to impact his sleep, therefore his school, his life, his family life. Um, Still, I focus on treating the skin lesions and getting them cleared up. And hopefully in doing so, um, I've addressed a lot of those issues. But certainly all these issues speak to the importance of getting these patients' disease under control. Should I be doing more than that? Uh, I think that's a great question. Um, well, I think, look, you know, to your point, I think the first thing is to recognize that these are the downstream consequences that occur in, all, in our atopic dermatitis patients. Because if you don't recognize that, then you, you kind of don't realize how important it is to get tight control of their disease. Um, but I think above and beyond that, there are scenarios where, yes, I think recognizing these comorbidities can be quite helpful. And you know, admittedly, it's not always easy to address these things. And uh, some of these are gonna be beyond the, our practice scope uh, to do in the standard dermatology setting, but, there are opportunities for us to at least be able to screen our patients and potentially refer them to the appropriate provider. Uh, you know, just as an example, when patients have um, refractory hay fever and allergic conjunctivitis, well, that's not just an isolated thing. That's actually going to impact our, our ability to control their skin disease because as long as their eyes are itchy and they're rubbing them nonstop, that's going to lead to lichenification and really eczematous lesions there. So there are scenarios where okay, maybe we don't feel comfortable working up that hay fever and understanding what those aeroallergens are, but if we refer them to the right source, you know, to the right, I should say, or destination, you know, to the right provider as an allergist, for example, to, to evaluate that, that may actually impact and improve their overall, um, uh, you know, disease severity. There are also some studies now that have shown in the pediatric population that by actually just using something like melatonin to improve sleep, that you can improve the atopic dermatitis disease severity as well. We don't really believe that that's an anti-inflammatory effect, but if patients are not sleeping well and they're scratching all throughout the night, that's gonna impact things. So there are opportunities uh, certainly for us to think beyond just the limitations of the skin, and, and those can really also have direct effects on the skin.